Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and you're watching episode number 58 of I Create Content. Hey everyone, appreciate you tuning in to today's show. If you caught our last episode, we were taking a look at type on path inside of Photoshop. Today, I've got a quick overview of things you can see in the new Lightroom 4 beta that was dropped this week. Let's go ahead and take a look. As you jump into the Lightroom 4 beta, you'll probably immediately notice that there are two new modules. We have a map and a book module. If you go and click on the map module, if your camera is GPS enabled, you'll see the coordinates pinned on a map and you can actually click through the images that were actually taken at a particular location. Now if your camera is not GPS enabled, you can simply drag a series of images and place them or pin them on the map. You have the ability to search for different locations, you can edit the metadata directly and even save off locations that you use frequently. Something else that we have of course is the new book module. If you take a look at the book module, we're actually creating either blurb books or PDFs. Now blurb is an online vendor that does print on demand. and they have a series of different book sizes. So these are samples of the different book sizes that you could print directly through Blurb. You can also choose the type of covers that you want. They have the ability to do uh, image wrap. They do uh, hardcover jackets, soft covers. You can choose the type of paper. And then it even gives you an estimate as to the cost of your book. You can choose the types of layouts that you want and it can even go and auto layout your book. Here I've chosen an auto layout. It's doing two or one image per page and if I click on a particular page I can drag an image for placement. I can zoom that image for placement and then even change the type of layout. So notice I'm going to click above here and I can change the type of layout that's available to me. I can go and modify the page. I could choose to do a multi-page layout. Here's three photos per page. I could just drag the photos that I want. And then this particular layout also includes text. So I could click in it and type some text. So I have lots of different options here in the book panel. And if you're familiar with Blurb, then you'll notice that there's a lot of similarities between the book panel and the book smart software that's supplied by Blurb. You can also save off your books, clear the books out, you can export the book directly to a PDF that you could view on an iPad or an Android tablet, or if you want, you can send that book directly to Blurb. If we jump back to the library module, at first glance, there doesn't seem to be a lot of differences in the library module, but notice if I pull up video footage, I can actually scrub through that footage directly inside the Lightroom 4 interface. And in fact, if I take a movie to the loop view, I can go ahead and play that footage directly without the need for any third-party utility or software. I can go and grab a still image and capture that frame. I can even set a poster frame. You can do basic video edits like trimming the footage or even going through and doing basic tonal corrections, white balance, and even color changes. And in some instances, you can choose some of your Lightroom presets to run against the footage. If we take a look at the develop module, here is where you'll see some changes, some improvements, but some changes. Specifically the basics panel. Notice in the basic panel you no longer have recovery, fill light, or brightness. Those sliders have been replaced with highlights, shadows, and whites. So if I go through and make different adjustments, this is Adobe's attempt to make these sliders a little more intuitive for all users 
so that you can go through, make the edits that you want directly. Notice that Clarity seems to have uh, some changes to it as well, and I can adjust overall exposure. So if you're an existing Lightroom 3 user, I encourage you to play with the new basic panel. It's going to kind of change your workflow a little bit and modify it. It might take some time to get used to, but I think you'll like the improvements there. Something else that you have, the ability to go and actually adjust white balance by using the adjustment brush. So notice now that I can actually paint and I can paint directly on the image and I can paint in my white balance. So I can choose where that goes, change the overall temperature. I can even go so far as to uh, do noise reduction and remove more by painting directly in the image. Other improvements include the sought after, the most common thing that was asked for inside of Lightroom, soft proofing. If I grab an image, we now have the ability to do soft proofing inside of Lightroom. Notice in the lower left of the develop module, there's a soft proofing checkbox. If I check that and turn it on, your background changes to a paper white and now you can actually do soft proofing to a specific color profile. So here I'm soft proofing to sRGB. I have the ability to do a monitor proof to make sure that I'm within the gamut um, of my particular monitor that I'm viewing. But I also have the ability to proof to my destination profile. So if I go here and click, notice if I bump up the saturation and make it heavy, I'm going to get a clipping warming. Hey, these colors, I've oversaturated what I could actually print. This is outside the sRGB gamut. So I'm getting this red warning across the page and that's controlled by this marker in the upper left. If I start to drop the saturation down, you'll see the warnings go away. I can pull the color back until the warnings go away. And if I needed to bump the color up, I could probably switch the vibrance boost the colors a little bit and not have as much issue. So soft proofing is a nice addition and you'll see that inside of your Lightroom 4 beta. So these are just a few things that you can see in the upcoming weeks. I'm going to do extended videos on each one of those features, more detail. Through the whole beta cycle, I'll be creating some videos for you to get you prepped for the actual Lightroom 4 released. If the video has been helpful for you today, please give it a thumbs up. As always, you can find me on Facebook, on Google, on Twitter. All right, please share this video with your friends. Like the video if you like it, and I will see you guys next week. Hey, Gigi. Thank you for watching. Episode number 53. My creator.